When we talk about whole disk encryption, we're not talking about encrypting a single file or encrypting a bit of information that we're sending over the network. We're talking about encrypting the entire volume of information, your operating system, all of your files, everything that you put on that hard drive would be completely encrypted. So this is really protecting every single bit of data on your system including the operating system. So that's a pretty interesting part of this is you really are protecting everything that you happen to write to that drive. This is really useful, of course, if you have mobile devices. Unfortunately, mobile devices can be stolen. They can be lost. They can be left at an airport somewhere. But it's OK. The data, at least on that laptop, would not be accessible by someone else because the entire drive is completely encrypted. You couldn't even pull that drive out and put it into another system to try to see that data because it still remains encrypted on that volume. So your data is going to be very, very protected. Many people in very large environments will use full disk encryption to be able to protect their very, very valuable data. And you'll see this built into operating systems. Things like Microsoft has BitLocker. You'll see third-party systems like TrueCrypt. That's an open source and absolutely free type of full disk encryption that you could put onto your computer. And we also can see now that even some hard drive manufacturers are creating controllers in their hard drives that encrypt in the controller, which really takes everything away from having a third-party application. It's just built into the drive itself. If you've ever installed a full disk encryption program before or had it integrated into your operating systems, you may have found that you've had to have the requirement of a Trusted Platform Module or a TPM. Trusted Platform Module is this nifty chip that you'll usually find on a motherboard that handles a lot of the cryptographic functions for us. It securely generates and stores keys for us. So if you have BitLocker, you're keeping keys that are associated with this particular machine. You need to store them on this particular machine. And and compare them to a key that you might have on USB. It's a piece of hardware. It has keys inside of it. That's a great way to do it. It also has a number of very, very advanced pseudo random number generators inside of it. So as we're building new keys, the TPM can help with that process since there are so many type of mathematical functions involved at being able to do that. You can also get a hash key summary of everything in your computer. So if you wanted to really compare what the configuration in hardware is to this PC today versus tomorrow, you can compare it based on a hash that you could create in this TPM. So it makes a very secure way to tell, has anything changed with this computer? You don't even have to do an inventory of the computer. You just check the hash that's on your trusted platform module, and you'll know immediately what is really inside of that computer. And this is one really good way to identify your computer. There's something very unique in the settings than the keys that are inside the TPM. So you can, of course, have a query to this TPM and see, are you the one I'm expecting to see? And you'll get back a secure key that will prove to you that this is really my computer because I know based on that exact TPM. If you've configured BitLocker before on Windows, this page may look a little bit familiar then. You can decide to either use that TPM on your computer, but you can also configure BitLocker to run without a compatible TPM. It requires then that you keep the keys and the information local on a USB flash drive. So if you got a TPM on your machine, you may just use the TPM. You don't have to carry anything around. Some people will also add to that, though. Not only do I need that TPM, but I also have to have a key that I'm keeping on a USB drive. I have to type in a certain startup pin, set of, of personal identification numbers, just to add to the authentication process. Some people will also configure this full disk encryption to be used on their removable media. And it may require it if you're on a system. That way you can plug in a USB drive. You can read and write to that USB drive. But everything there will be encrypted by default, full disk encryption. And if you take out that that drive, that USB key, you go somewhere, you drop it, you lose it, something happens to it. It's OK. All of the information on there is completely encrypted. You can also see additional features may be available to you. Things like TrueCrypt are nice because you can build hidden partitions and hidden operating systems that are hidden away. In fact, you can start your computer. It looks like a normal Windows desktop. But if you start your computer in a certain way, you will be able to access the hidden operating system. So that's one 
one very good way to keep things very safe using these capabilities of this full disk encryption. And of course, if you're doing any type of encryption, make sure you back up those keys. If you were to lose the keys or the PIN numbers or that USB drive with your certificate that allowed you to start up your computer, there's no going back. So make sure you have either a way to back up your key or have an administrative method in place with an additional decryption key so that you'll always have access to your data.